There we go. All right. Uh, am I all good? All good. All right. Hi. Hey. Thank you. Uh, welcome. And uh, now we're actually going to talk about AMP. And I'm also going to tell you the reason why we had a rail talk in the otherwise AMP lineup, lineup in here. But let's jump right in. So let's talk about the mobile web. So it turns out the mobile web, in some situations, is really, really slow. We really need to talk about that turtle in the room. And at least the part that is media news sites. So um, why mobile web? Why not just desktop web? Why not just all web? Right? Every website has a performance issue, as we just saw. Well, we have to be serious about performance more so on mobile than other platforms. That's because, first of all, performance is a feature, right? Um, but not everyone gets that. And performance uh, is really proportional to engagement as well. Uh, so for instance, Facebook did a couple of A-B studies that show that even if you just half the scrolling from 60 FPS on a really high-end device to 30 FPS in a new stream, the, the engagements that people would do on the page would actually decrease quite significantly. So it's really important to, to, to embrace that, that actually performance is a feature that can really lose, have you lose money if you don't do it well. So why smartphones, right? Well, smartphones, it's important to reiterate that. If you look at a smartphone and you look at it from a user perspective, uh, it's amazing, right? It's new. Um, so, so it's this new ecosystem that replaces my desktop computer, right? It's a new shiny. Um, and apps on smartphones usually feel almost better because they look fresher, everything looks greater. It's this amazing new world. But for developers, it's not the same thing, right? Developers quickly realize that, well, this is a, this is a device that usually has slower internet. It has slower execution of apps and sites. It has a smaller screen. It has worse input methods. So pretty much everything is worse about it than on the desktop computer. That's unfortunate for developers, to just say the least. And what's even more unfortunate is that companies like Apple and Google obviously as well with Android, um, but Apple was the first to actually do this, came up with a OS, with a mobile OS, that delivered on perceived performance. So what they did is they, they were hiding a lot of the the uh, problems that they actually had with the hardware in terms of animations, etc. So if you click on one app, you don't see it loading in the background, right? Uh, you see a, a, an animation spins up on a separate thread, it zooms in, and at that time it feels almost instantaneous that where still it took a long time to load. So that was smart from Apple. Uh, it's really not great for us web developers because then our page will feel like shit. Um, <laughs> So yes, this, this is pretty bad. Um, but even worse, uh, it is with publishing and media sites. So um, it's basically a turtle sitting on the turtle that makes the first turtle slower, um, <laughs> which is really unfortunate. So why is that? Well, there's, uh, there's this guy who created an amazing website called Death to Bullshit, uh, one of our fellow web developers. And, um, uh, Death to Bullshit is obviously a fake news site, but it's a very decent example of what happens if you take a seriously <laughs> pretty good example of a, of a decent article, right, and then just add stuff to it, right? <laughs> stuff that publishers think they need, right? Um, and, I mean, you probably have seen something like that before, right? You probably see it every day on your phone. I mean, let's be real. And a page I recently visited, I'm not going to name it because it's a universal problem, um, uh, it looks like this. Over a thousand requests made over the network. I mean, I should probably have showed you the, the, the DevTools timeline because it looks amazing. Um, more than five ad networks, different ad networks, Templars, Beacon Solutions, and Analytics providers, uh, more than 20 second load time on a fast desktop connection. Um, and so if you think about the mobile connection, right, you start realizing, hey, a request on a mobile connection, on a 3G connection, still averages around 300 milliseconds. Now multiply that by a thousand requests and you have zero bytes on the screen and already a couple of minutes in, right? So that doesn't work because really if you look at mobile computing without good connectivity, it's shit. Um, and it's, it's a big problem, even for publishing sites it's a big problem because 40% of people 
abandon a, web abandon a website that takes more than three seconds to load. I mean, just imagine that for a second, right? 40%, that's crazy. And at 10%, actually, everyone drops off. So at 10%, everything is lost, and most sites don't load uh, under 10 seconds, which is really unfortunate. So yes, um, this talk is really, really sad. No, it's not. OK, well, there's going to be some, uh, uh, some good stuff coming. So why does all of this happen? Why are media sites so bad? Um, well, one could think that the developers behind it just simply don't know what to do, right? Um, that all of those people are just really, really dumb and don't know how to do code. <laughs> Turns out that's not true. It's not the developers. And for a very long time, uh, my team, including Paul Irish, um, has been teaching people to make pages, pages really, really fast. And um, we've been quite successful with the development community, so that's good. No, it's a different problem. The problem is this. The problem is that in an environment where you're trying to really get to good numbers, the manager comes up and asks for another beacon because he has to report uh, the numbers and it's really not looking great. So they're trying everything, they're desperate to put more stuff in to do user acquisition. What you're looking at is really, it's monetization and user acquisition versus the user experience at this point, right? Because performance obviously is user experience. So that's not a good situation to be in, that's a conflict of interest. And that's the biggest reason why we are in this situation we're currently in. So what are our current solutions? Well, one thing we could do, and probably some of you do, are aggressive ad analytics or beacon blockers. Uh, now, they sort of work, but obviously dramatically harm publishers. At some point, the site goes down and message says, this is why you can't have nice things. And it's sort of true. I mean, you're destroying the publishing model, uh, the, the monetization model of those of those publishers. Now, I still don't feel like you're, you're a bad pirate because you do it for a reason, right? It improves the speed of your site. Uh, it actually makes the web usable. But it's not a great solution for publishers. The next solution is walled content distribution platforms. Now, those require their, their, their uh, individual um, um, you know, parts of, of platforms that have been built from scratch to drive performance, to drive the needs of publishers, but they require a contract between platform and publisher and lock you to that specific platform. Now, they partially work, but they're a major hassle to maintain and don't really embrace the qualities of the web. You're basically locked into a separate ecosystem. And then number three is custom native apps. Now, for the publishing uh, industries and e for the e-commerce industries as well, they have proven to not work. I mean, they work maybe for the top three or something, but in general, they don't because most of the traffic those news sites and media sites are getting is organic. So you lose the best qualities of the web by doing native apps. Again, all of these really don't seem like legit solutions. They're just not the right solutions for the problem, uh, in, in our opinion. Um, so yes, theoretically, you could build that elusive unicorn, right? Uh, unicorn news site that doesn't compromise, but all third-party solutions embedded on the site would have to follow suit, suit, suit or not just web devs. Um, and the entire port reporting chain of the company would need to comply and be strict about what to include and what not. So we know of very, very, very few sites that actually do this. So uh, a couple of companies, including uh, Twitter, Google, and a couple other partners, went back to the drawing board to find a new bulletproof approach that actually solves that problem in a decent way. Now, what are the things that we wanted to solve? But first, it needs to make websites fast, no compromises. That is obviously one of the biggest goals that needed to happen. Second, it needs to be validatable. Uh, why am I saying this? Because it turns out that measuring if a website is consistently fast or not is really hard. It's a really hard problem. Uh, and, and so we couldn't just let everyone go wild with whatever JavaScript they wanted to come up with um, and, and measure it in a nice way. It needs to be easy to implement, too. So um, if, you, if you come up with a new technology or a new solution that takes weeks and weeks of engineering effort and, and workshops for people to come to, et cetera, um, it's going to be very risky to do so for most publishers. And finally, and uh, it, it hurts me to say this, but it, it needs strong incentives. Now, I wish that improving the user experience would be the only incentive that we would ever need. 
Unfortunately, we don't live in that world today. Now, we all want to be there, um, but, but right now, we need different incentives to offer to publishers. And finally, um, it needs to embrace the open web, not replace it. That's really, really important on this, on, uh, for us, um, because we all love the open web. We, we have been part of the open web for a long time. Um, we don't want to replace it. So that sounds like an even crazier unicorn, right? But again, with a couple of partners and publishers, we came together and uh, came up with AMP. So AMP is our early proof of concept to solve these problems. It's not perfect, but it does have some promising aspects, and we're looking forward to involving it with feedback. Now, AMP is short for Accelerated Mobile Pages, and we kicked it off as an open source effort uh, in a collaboration with everyone else. Uh, to users, it's really about content. Content is king here. Um, we want to make sure that users access the content in the best possible way. And the user experience here is queen. Um, but to publishers, AMP is guaranteed to perform well. So if you do, if you do an AMP page, um, we want it to be guaranteed that it performs well. We're probably not always going to gonna, gonna, uh, deliver on that right away, because again, it's an early proof of concept. But that's the goal. And we also want it to be very well supported by platforms. We want to add the right incentives to actually implement it. Now, important, uh, if you now think, well, if this is all about AMP, why did we have Paul Irish speak about Rail, which is something completely different? Well, AMP implements Rail. So um, we implemented, we built AMP because we want everyone to be Rail compatible. Now, of course, if you build your own site and, and, and you know what you're doing, and it's great, it's fast and everything, right? AMP might not make your site better, right? To be clear, it might not make your site better. So you might, in that case, not be the user audience, the target audience. So before we dig in, again, proof of concept, but here's our work of progress looks like. So this is a search demo that we released um, uh, a while ago, um, just recently, actually. Um, and you can look at it, uh, look at it uh, on your phone right now. Um, and uh, as you can see, once I typed in what I want to search on Google, um, I see this new search carousel when I click on a couple of links. And those actually load the actual site on, on, uh, from, the, from the remote uh, publishing company. Uh, and it's so fast that you almost don't realize that it's loading. Um, and that is kind of the experience that we're aiming for. That's what we want. That's what I personally want as a user. So how does it work? So AMP in action consists of three different parts, AMP HTML, AMP JS, and AMP CDN. AMP HTML is uh, built on a custom set of elements, um, and um, it's the actual specification that you need to use. Um, but it's basically HTML extended with a couple of custom properties. Uh, those are then uh, supercharged by the JavaScript library that is AMP JS. And then um, the CDN I'm going to talk about later as well. So how does a typical AMP document look like? Looks like this, and uh, this is quite tiny, so we're just going to go walk through them uh, really quickly. First one is the doc type. Um, so doc type, this is actually the real doc type. So you can use that Unicode in the doc type, and we'll, we'll discover that it's an AMP document. Um, then you use UTF-8, because if you don't UTF-8, frankly, you're probably an idiot. Um, <laughs> But so UT UTF-8 is, 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 is just generally great. Um, <laughs> now, uh, you can just use AMP as your normal way of writing HTML pages. That's fine. That's totally decent. But if you want to do a separate page, a uh, regular HTML version, you can do that by using link write canonical and just point to it. Then uh, we use a technique to uh, prevent flash of Einstein content to just hide the body. Now, this might evolve over time. We have a couple of counter proposals because um, it might, might look a little weird. Um, but this is basically to prevent flash of unsigned content. Then we load the MJS library from the AMP uh, CDN. Um, and then there's uh, time for custom styles. Uh, those styles are limited in what you can do. But um, so, for instance, you can't use the star selector because the star selector, um, we really can't really expect predict what, what, what is happening. Um, and so there's a couple of exceptions here that you can't use. Now, after that, 
it's really just mostly standard HTML. So P tags, H1 tags, whatever. Um, most of them that are used to create content actually work. Now, we replace some of the tags with different tags. For instance, image is replaced with AMP image, or we have a new AMP ad tag that is used to load actual ads. So you would think, why do you need an image tag? Uh, I already have an image tag. It works. It sits in the browser. It loads images. Well, we did it because we wanted to control the load. We wanted to control the load chain really well. And Malta is going to talk about this a bit more after after my talk. Um, so let's talk about how MJS actually achieves that. Now, MJS enforces those best practices. One of the things that it does, for instance, is it does makes everything that comes from external resources asynchronous. So goodbye document write, There's, there will be no script in your page that can use document write in your page context because everything is sandboxed. So there's no way uh, for anything in the page to go and block anything uh, in terms of rendering. So that's good. Then number two is DNS prefetching and pre-connect. Now the browser obviously does some of that already, but we go further than that. Basically when we see there's a Twitter pack in your tag on your page and we know because we give you custom, prop, uh, custom elements, right? So we scan the page initially uh, right when we see it. And then we do pre-connects. And pre-connects look like this. So this is the actual AMP source for the AMP Twitter element. Um, so as soon as we register the element because it's used on the page for the first time, we do pre-connects to the actual URLs that are going to be used. So it's already fresh uh, and, and you, you're not suffering from a DNS um, lookup. When the time comes, you actually want to see the tweet. Then we also do download independent sizing. So what does that mean? It means that um, we always know about how big images will be on your site or videos or whatever. We know we, we, all of them have a fixed aspect ratio. Um, so even in responsive situations, we know how it will look like. That means that we can load the page as it would look like, and there will be no relayout re needed uh, when the images actually come in and load. So this is uh, really significant in terms of reducing relayouts, uh, reducing uh, style, re, uh, re style calculations, um, which is really meaningful if you want to get something painted quickly. And then we also do some smart content prioritization. So for instance, resources such as images or ads are downloaded only if they're likely to be seen by the user. So in one case could be only the things that get loaded uh, above the fold, or uh, things that you would quickly scroll to. Uh, another optimization that we can only do because we replace the original tags with custom tags. And finally, it's limited by design. It's really less of all madness, as I call it. Uh, what does that mean? Well, there's no user authored JS because allowing arbitrary JS in the PNG uh, in the page allows for the introduction of non-detectable bottlenecks. So it's disabled for now. I might change in the future, but we, we just don't have the right uh, idea of what's going on if we allow any arbitrary JS to happen. We also, again, only allow a subset of tags and selectors. So for instance, applets, applets uh, objects, forms, um, and stuff uh, like uh, external style sheets that could load even more external style sheets and even more external style sheets, those are all situations that we can't really control. So we can't say, hey, this page validates and it's guaranteed to be fast if, if, if I see an applet on the page. So that's why. And a few others, like no scrolling element, elements on the page. Um, we want the page to be the pre preliminary way to actually scroll and, and look at content. And um, we also don't want any styles that are larger, for instance, like uh, than 50 kilobytes, because you shouldn't need that to just display content. So that sounds pretty sad, right? I mean, you're taking all the fun away, right? You could think that right now, but the good news is we also have some built-in sugar. Built-in sugar such as the AMP image tag. And the AMP image tag, for instance, has full source set support, even in browsers that don't support it yet, um, which is quite cool if you want to do responsive design. We also have custom tags for ads. So instead of dealing with every ad library in a custom way, you can use the AMP ad tag and just use a couple of custom uh, uh, properties to say um, what you need in terms of ads, what kind of format, etc., cetera, um, which then sandboxes the ad and only loads it when it's actually needed. So your content will always be prioritized. AMP Carousel and uh, AMP Lightbox are 
high-level components that uh, add some functionality that a lot of publishers need in their content, like, again, like a carousel or a lightbox. And then we have even stuff to work with third parties, like uh, the, oh, there we go, M Twitter tag that uh, shows you an embedded tweet. This one actually um, is the only exception when it comes to aspect ratio, just a fun fact, because we can't really know what the aspect ratio of an embedded tweet will be, um, because we don't know if it's will, it will have a picture or a couple of other factors. So that's one exception where we don't know the actual aspect ratio. But um, yeah, it's good to be able to embed tweets. So th those are just a couple of examples of the MJS library, the things that the MJS library does to improve the page speed. But then there's also the MCDN, which is the, the third part in the story that I'm mentioning today. And um, what the, the thing that is important here for the MCDN to work is the fact that M validates. Right? Because we have a validation system that can say, hey, this page works. It's guaranteed to work. We know this is all the content that I need. And there's no external resources that I need that would otherwise break if I include it in my CDN. We can do that. So we can build a custom CDN that just fetches, um, fetches your page on whatever server you live on. And it's basically uh, auto-awesome at this point, or auto-awesomer at least, um, because the Google CDN that we are going to implement or have implemented in a, in a first version takes that page and uh, catches it in a really efficient way. For instance, um, we, we are thinking of adding a service worker that then does some further caching. So all of this and image optimizations, et cetera, all of those are ideas that improve your page further without even you having to do anything. So if you click on one of those links in the search carousel, it will actually load it from the CDN instead of your own page, uh, making for a much greater experience for users. And those always work when the URL is hidden. right? So every time you're in your situation, for instance, someone clicks on a Facebook link, on a Twitter link, um, and so you land in a web view, um, at this point, it doesn't really make a difference if you load it on a different domain, because the user doesn't see the domain anyway. At this point, it's a, it's a great, way, great way to actually load it from the CDN. Or you have iframes on the page, so that's another one. For instance, the search carousel actually uses iframes to do that. So, what's next? Well, if you want to have a fast mobile web as much as we do, come help us. Really, as I said, this is a proof of concept. We're nowhere near finished. We know that some of this might come as controversial, or you might have a lot of questions about it, which is why we have a lengthy Q&A session afterwards. But it's really a work in process. We want to stress that. We all want to do the right thing. We all want to improve the performance of the web as, at large. And we think AMP is, is a decent way to get there. And we, we love all your feedback that you have. And finally, we're all in this together. Right? It's, it, it only works if all the platforms participate, all the CMSs, analytics, publishers, platforms, developers, CDNs of, of the world. And that includes all of you web developers. So bottom, uh, 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 the, the bottom of it is, if you got an AMP displaying third-party web content, try to prefer AMP, because it's just automatically guaranteed to work. And if you're a web developer looking to share fast content, use AMP to make mobile platform experience faster. And in the right environment, even a turtle can be fast. Thank you.